Welcome back to Storytime with Colorful Story. We are breaking down the Denmark Vesti story. Here is the makeup that I will be using for today's episode. Now, when we left off, we were talking about a little bit of Denmark's backstory, um, who also goes by the name of Telemac. And we were about to get into the influence of the church. Chapter three deals with Denmark Vesey's influence in the church and from the church when it comes to the revolt that took place. Now, as just a reminder, Telemac was not your ordinary um, enslaved African. Um, the author goes on to talk about how his freedom, how his purchase of his freedom influenced the way that he moved. So in this chapter, it opens with us learning that Denmark purchased his freedom and was able to become a homeowner or a renter at the time, which is very rare for black people during this time to be able to do um, because there were laws such as black codes and slave codes put in place to make sure that black people were not able to um, excel like their white counterparts. So him owning a home, a home that was three blocks away from South Carolina's governor was a big deal. The author then shifts gears a little bit and starts to talk about um, Denmark's influence in the church. So originally he was a part of the Second Presbyterian Church, but then we'll get into it later, but he switched to the African Methodist Episcopal Church, the AME Church, which is historically, predominantly, if not exclusively, um, attended by Africans, whether they were enslaved or freed. Um, the church itself emphasized the African form of worship. Um, and you may be thinking, oh, slave owners would allow this type of thing to happen? Y'all, it's a thing. It's a thing. It doesn't make any sense, but we'll get into it. Oh, there was something that I did forget. When it came to Denmark purchasing his freedom, right? So Denmark purchased his freedom for $600. And we're not quite sure why he did that because he was more valuable to Joseph Denmark as a slave. However, what the author slips in is that Joseph was in debt. The author goes on to talk about how Joseph was in the process of consistently being sued. So he needed a way to make money. And he alludes to the sale of Denmark. I'm sorry, the purchasing of Denmark's freedom being part of Joseph getting himself out of debt. Now back to this church situation that we're dealing with. If you grew up in the South, then most of the people who grew up before social media was a big thing. Church was a place of not only worship, but for black people, it was a place of solitude, of congregating, to talk about current events, to talk about how they're going to organize, to better the community. Church was more than just worship. And Denmark, and his efforts to start the revolution um, is along that same path. Now, the white Charlestonians didn't realize this, but they were trying to be a part of the Enlightenment movement, trying to make it seem like they're not as barbaric as they actually are. Uh, when it comes to torturing enslaved Africans. So this was why they allowed them to be a part of the African Methodist Episcopal Church. But the way that they got there is interesting. So a group of black enslaved and free individuals had gotten tired of the way that white churches were behaving towards them as far as their inequalities, as far as their discrimination. And they were like, you know what? for lack of a better term, to hell with your church, we're gonna start our own. And that's how Charleston got the AME church, where there were 
4,367 members. That was more than the free population. So they speculate that a lot of their members were enslaved Africans as well. Now you would think they were a part of this whole enlightenment movement and trying to treat their enslaved Africans uh, a little bit more humanely and letting them love on the Lord. But uh, they weren't that humane because shortly afterwards, um, they decided to send the police to the AME church, raid the church and attempt to destroy it while also beating and torturing its members because they did something very illegal. Now, you might be wondering what could be so illegal that you would raid a church and then destroy it? Well, if you thought it was because black people were minding their business, you would be correct. The actual law that they broke states they were buying a lot, erecting a building, using it to worship, and it annoyed people without color. So on December 3rd of 1817, they decided to raid the AME church, beat and torture black people, and then try to attempt to burn it to the ground. So much for loving the Lord. Unfortunately for them, the enslaved and the free people of color in Charleston view Denmark Vesey as some sort of messiah, black messiah, who was there to liberate them because he would preach to them about not bowing to white people, not uh, shrinking themselves as less than because he believed that we were all created equal and should be treated as such. Their white counterparts did not. Um, so. He utilized the church and his mess to deliver his message um, of freedom and a revolution because he was tired. And those who consider themselves doing the Lord's work by tormenting people of color, um, they messed around and found out. So. I don't want to give away too much. I really want y'all to dig into this book because it's changing the idea of how we view someone who was deemed an insurrectionist, a um, a terrorist in, in so many ways. So let me know your thoughts as we're learning about Denmark Vesey and his influence from the church, utilizing the church as a place to meet with others. Do you see that type of congregation, not necessarily starting a revolution, but do you see that type of congregation in churches today? Do you see that type of unity and wanting to be a, a pillar in the community of wanting to get black people out of oppression? Because at many points throughout history we've seen that the church played a major role in how our community operates and the church is taking a back seat in a lot of ways so i just wanted to know i'm not giving any input on what your church is doing i just want to know if when you see churches do you think they're the same pillars in the black community as they used to be thank y'all for watching see y'all next time on colorful story